Oh no, it's gonna stream right away tonight. Ain't that the sweet one? Let me fix that up. Hi folks. You know, everybody keeps asking me, and I keep asking you, is the audio okay? <laughs> and I know you see the big red, orange looking banana there, but that's hopefully gonna give us better audio. So while I'm waiting for somebody to confirm, I'll say hi. Broken ass owner, char, diver dude, 701, Ivan, fish fan, trout, berm, bum, sporty diver, Stetson Griffin, Stacy Lane. Hi Stacy! You know, I got a couple extra screens up here and lights up here. Is the audio coming in folks? Bubba, Lunar, that's all the comments I got. There's a quiet night in my conversation section. So while I'm waiting for somebody to confirm that my audio is actually working, I'll get this other screen ready. Come on, YouTube. Nothing, nothing. I'll refresh the page. Sorry, folks. It's no good me yakking until I know for sure. That's a whole minute gone. No good for me talking until... And we're not getting nothing in the comment section. Maybe, hello Dana, hi Dana, hi everyone. Checks and balances, looks like everybody's saying hi on that one. So I guess we're good to go. And streaming's good. You can hear me, okay. See, it takes a long time, don't it, for your comments to show up. Let me see, now every night everybody's asking me, keeps asking me for a diving story and I forget. There. I forget so let me tell you a quick story let me see well I've taken uh, I used to go through about a hundred divers to find a really good diver and the way I train a diver even though he's got lots of training already I always train him because I run the shows and you know every show is different every boat is different all the hydraulics are different radar sounders everything else and everybody has to be versed and all of that because if I get injured, who's going to bring the boat back in the port? And I'm usually gone for 100 days at a time, so it's vital that everybody knows how to operate proficiently everything on the boat. But that's besides the point. A diver is a very finicky thing, believe it or not. And so the trick to do is um, when a diver goes off the side of the boat the first time they're on the boat, and the first time they're out there, they don't want to go down to the bottom. They just want to sit there and check all their gear and come back up and get on the ladder again. I actually discovered, uh, and I got a secret technique, that I can guarantee you the diver will go down and get on the bottom. Even if he's going to drown, he'll still go down and get on the bottom. And what I do is, uh, when he goes over the side of the boat, his very first time starts going down the ladder, and the minute his head gets under the water, I swing around, hang my ass off it, and start trying to poop on his head. And every single time, he'll just go right on down to the bottom. I've seen a scatter one come up, blow up laughing, and then go down. And when they come up later, they're still laughing. And another technique I do for seeing how a diver reacts is I'll go down and I'll bring up a 20 or 30 pound um, octopus. And when I get to the surface, I'll stick them right on my head. Yeah, I know, because I usually wear a full face, like a, a Poseidon or something, but a Pegasus. And uh, what I do is the, the boat is aluminum usually and the ladders are aluminum and I got tools with me so I'll grab the ladder and I'll slam the ladder on the side of the boat and I'll slam on the boat with my tools and I'll be screaming help get it off me get it off me screaming my head off and I don't know how many people I've seen just like literally going to shock because you can get away with the, the octopus will just hang on to your head for a while. So what you do is you bring him up off the bottom like an umbrella upside down and he's like a chicken with his head under the wing. And so I bring it up to the boat and just as I get to the boat, because it takes the octopus about a minute to reorient itself, um, from, you know, because we used to harvest him. But anyway, you stick him on your head and scream. And I've only seen this, a rare one would pick him up and, and actually grab him and throw him, but they usually throw him back in the ocean. And I always yell at him, what are you doing man, that's supper. And they look at you like, they almost got tears in their eyes and all of a sudden they just realized they got punked. But I love hanging my ass over the ladder when the diver first goes down. That's just, 
Like I'll eat all kinds of sausages and pour coffee back and I'll be like holding on my leg right waiting for him to get in the water. That's a true story folks, I do that all the time. Because that's how I like to uh, introduce a diver <laughs> to the ocean. And what I do with a lot of divers is um, I'll uh, put them in the water and I'll tip them upside down where their weight belt will come up under their armpits and their shoe because they're dry suits and their legs will fill up with ear. And so all their gear is falling off them up into their armpits. And then I reach down and turn their oxygen off. And now they got to get their head up. Now there's a piece of rope there tied onto their wrist. I'm not really a terrible person, believe me. But I want them to experience that because when you're at the surface, if you get flipped over with a dry suit on, you can end up with all your in your legs. And you will drown uh, most people. And so I teach them how to get out of that because they were on the ocean in the ground swells. You definitely got to be able to do it. It's the most difficult thing you can ever do. I had it happen to me one time in a kelp forest, stuck at the ceiling upside down, got tipped over by a wave. The tender didn't see me. And I was in this kelp forest and I couldn't bring my head back up and I was running out of oxygen. So I finally ran out of oxygen and I stripped everything off and got my head up. But it's so difficult. And so the solution is you always wear ankle weights so that that can't happen to you. And sometimes ankle weights are a pain in your ears. But drowning upside down at the surface of the ocean when air is just right there and you can do a sit up. So I know I procrastinate it. But I thought that was a good story, a couple of good stories for everybody. Because i got a tendency to talk about some pretty dramatic stuff when I talk about diving because I've done it for so long. And i got around 14,000 hours logged in. That's actually logged in. And I dove on around 300 wrecks in my own time. And I've been to every port in Canada except for maybe 10. And I ran around 15 commercial uh, dive operations. And I used to spend 315 days a year on the ocean. And we go to divers like bubblegum. That's how I used to say it. So you're a diver, are you? Huh? You're chasing bikinis around in the Bahamas for a couple of years. And you think you can come out here and work, do you? <laughs> you got to get you up to speed. And it's two marathons a day on the human body to do six hours a day in the ocean. Every day it gets a little harder, of course. If it's close to a full moon, you're bucking the tides. That gets a lot harder. It puts up a lot more energy. And tonight we're going to cover, besides my diving, there you go, everything's looking good. I got some really good stuff here tonight. Going to take us way back, way back, folks. March the 12th, 2011, the day after the tsunami and the earthquake in Japan. Excuse me. Power company says all the functions to keep cooling water levels in number three reactor have failed. So that was official statement, 7 a.m. in the morning. Explosion at Fukushima can only have been caused by a meltdown of the reactor core, March 12, 2011. Explosion at Fukushima could only have been caused by a meltdown of the reactor core government agency. Uh, that was a safety body on March the 13th. So that's two days after Fukushima. Now. On March the 12th, the day after, because this is back and forth because there's so much of this, but it's all, all March what I'm talking about tonight. Top official says meltdown likely underway at a second nuclear reactor. That was March the 12th. So by March the 12th, there was two reactors the very day after. Right? These are the headlines, folks. These are good headlines. This is the AP. Partial nuclear meltdown underway at Japan's plants is official. That was on the 12th. Again on the 12th, another headline, 6.4 earthquake hit Fukushima nuclear plant after shocks hit the nuclear plant. So they had this tsunami come in. These people don't even know if their family is alive or swept away. And they're working frantically to regain control when pretty well everybody I know went home looking for their family. They're working with no power. They're working uh, with no communications. Um, they know a lot of people are already dead. They know the devastation is countrywide. They know the nuclear fallout now on by the 13th of March is into incredible overdrive. And so, you know, these people have an amazing amount of weight on their shoulder and an amazing amount of courage as far as I'm concerned of Fukushima 50. And there's a link below to their pictures 
There's 2,136 if you download all 99 packets. Yeah, you're welcome, Natlak Ladla Kar. My diamond stories, thank you. Uh, here's the next one. So this is important stuff I got here for everybody tonight. Nuclear officials confirm explosion at Fukushima number three. March 13, 2011. Nuclear officials confirm hydrogen explosion at Unit 3 of Fukushima Diachi's plant. That's the Washington Post, March the 13th. So the evidence is really stacked up, and we're only a few minutes into the video. AP journalist feels massive explosion at number 3 nuclear plant from 25 miles away, March the 14th. This is three days after the tsunami and the earthquake. 25 miles away. They felt a concussion. That was AP. Wow. That's a pretty wild one. March the 15th, four days later, Australian forecast map shows possible radioactivity east of Los Angeles by March the 18th. So March the 15th, they came up to forecast, and I can't show you the maps. But I am going to put a big screen TV right here behind me in the next couple of days. And I'm going to load that up with memory cards of all the best pictures I got. I got three or four thousand pictures there. And I'll try to keep track of what you've seen the first night, and then I'll pick up from that the second night for pictures for the background. But because we're streaming on YouTube, it I'm not sure. Well, I mean, these these uh, pinhead up here, right? He shows up, so maybe the screen will be okay. So low quality is the problem. But we'll try it and see if it works for everybody. That'll give you some background hokey pokey going under. Let me finish that one. That was March the 15th, so that was four days after the earthquake. And March the 13th, back uh, to two days after, third reactor to Fukushima to have salt water injected. That's unit number two. March the 13th, 2011. Japan's Tokyo Electric Power Company is preparing to put salt seawater into the number two reactor. And there's a link below to the Buckyballs, because that was a big no-no, but they had no choice. Um, I'm not going to go down the road. This is why I go through all these. This, this uh, March 13th again, nuclear plant designer. Tokyo suppressing information. Serious meltdown, highly like, likely. But like I say, I just read the, the other articles that he didn't know about on that day. Because you can imagine the trauma and the carnage in Japan at this stage, I'm sure. You know, the first week is just uh, it's just heartbreaking. These people suffered. Official presuming that two nuclear rea reactors have now melted down. That was March the 13th, right? That was two days after the tsunami. Presuming, they're presuming that two, two nuclear reactors have now melted down. So the death plumes were on their way. And that was CNN, March the 13th. March the 14th, radiation around Fukushima nearing levels where humans vomit uncontrollably. And hair can be stripped from your body. That was March the 14th, three days later. Three days later. Hi, pet lover. Yo, I don't... I'm going to save my opinion on Chris Busby till tomorrow night. Does that... Does that help you? I got a few issues that I'm going to... I'm going to air out. But tonight I wanted to cover this. Um, the first month. But I do got issues with Busby and Alex Jones. Huge issues. And I'll cover all of that tomorrow night when I put everything together for it. But I'm not going to touch it tonight. But there's not much escapes me. And when it bugs me, well, i got to tell you about it because it bugged me. And there's a reason why it bugged me. Radiation around Fukushima levels where humans are vomiting uncontrollably. This is two, three days after March the 14th, and hair can be stripped from their bodies. That's mad. Tokyo nuke cloud crisis. That's the sun, March the 14th, 2011. Just a living hell, eh? Expert. March the 13th, another article. Nuclear radiation could spread to the U.S. At least three nuclear facilities at risk. They were talking about one, two, and three reactors at Fukushima. And um, that was the 13th, two days after. At least three nuclear facilities at risk. And they're worried about the spreading to the U.S. 
And so they came up with the national security order, and they never told you. See? A handful of people, and we don't know who that is yet, decided that you should know about the radioactivity coming your way. And they've done the same thing to Canada and other countries. They colluded. Not to tell us it's a conspiracy, a true conspiracy. They shut down, uh, and I got the articles coming up about that. Let me hit the next one. Forecast shows Tokyo on a radiation threat on Sunday, March the 20th. This was March the 18th. Tokyo may be at a greater risk from radiation from the damaged Fukushima nuclear reactors from March the 20th after shifting winds follow rain in the region. Now, remember the other night when I was talking about how Tokyo was going to move, or the government was going to move their offices, not, not the Tokyo people, but just the government employees and the bootlickers, 250 miles west, and then that same night we were talking about another article where the plumes had made it all the way to the west coast, even though the prevailing winds are from the west, but the plumes had made it all the way to the west coast of Japan. Uh, that's 1,200 miles away, 1,200 kilometers away. So then it's easy to accept the idea that the plumes were also dragged towards Canada and the United States 1,200 miles through the year, and they landed in the ocean also along the way. It's not just the hemorrhaging that's coming out of the uh, Fukushima underneath it from the riverbed that's flushing all the isotopes out into the ocean at an incredible, inconceivable rate every day and that everybody knows is extraordinarily radioactive water. This is extraordinary. This is 40 uh, million disintegrations per second in a liter water when it runs over the corium, at least. If not, uh, many times more than that, you know. And uh, why I'm on that talking about it, let's run over to e, e News for a quick second. New Journal's article, Fukushima may already have released 90 quadrillion, that's a thousand million million Beckwells uh, and once again cesium-137 reactors don't run on cesium-137 they run on uranium and plutonium and so uh, when you hear people talking about cesium like it's some part of the reactor tell them shut up tell them you don't want to listen to nonsense tell them it's uranium and it's plutonium and if they want people to listen to them and pay attention to them they better get on the ball because if they're going to keep spreading stuff like that, they can't, like, it's okay to say cesium. It's okay to say that. But you got to come out and say, it's, but the reactors are plutonium and uranium also. You can't just keep leaving that out of the equation. And because if they say it, then people are going to say, well, if that's how much cesium is there, how much uranium is there, and how much 235 and 234 is there, and how much plutonium 239 is there, how much uranium is there. 239s, which break down into plutonium. It's a, um, that's okay, radiation uh, expert. It's terrifying how Fukushima, now this is uh, Busby, ecosystem has collapsed since Fukushima. That's kind of interesting. I'll cover that tomorrow night. I'm not going to touch it. Secrecy agreement between Fukushima and IAEA revealed by Tokyo newspaper. They hid the health effects in Chernobyl. The same thing is going to happen to Fukushima. Gee, no shit, Batman. But at least they're coming out and talking about it, right? We don't want to discourage him from coming out and saying it. That's the whole point of what we do here. And um, you guys, some great comments, by the way. Which is always that, but I mean, this last three and four times. It's just really good. It's really good stuff. You guys are getting there. Um, you don't need me no more soon. It'll be like, I'll just sit here and everybody will just go in the comments. I'll say something and everybody will go, <laughs> it'll be so awesome. Going around shoving bananas up all the PR firms. Anyways, uh, the next headline. Hang on, sorry. All of the stricken reactors. This is March the 18th. Spent fuel pools contain plutonium. All of them. Every bloody one of them. Hi, Missing Sky 101. Hi, Rad Chick. I need Miss Milky here too, so I can do both hands at one time. Uh, there is some truth in what all the big names say. Yes, there always is. And what they don't say, that is a clue as to their agendas. That's right. Brilliant. Thank you. Rad Chick. Anybody know Rad Chick? Uh, Christina Consolo. You will find a number of links below. 
uh, amazing interview she done recently with U.S. Navy sailors. Man, that's that's stunning. How they talk about they had to take the engines out of um, the aircraft on the aircraft carrier because they were so radiated from flying through the plumes. That's amazing. That guy was well. He he worked on the U.S.S. Ronald Reagan, uh, the one that was the most talk, and that was some amazing stuff. Christine definitely got the scoop on that, and that's why she's down there every night, because that's such an important link for everybody to understand how deadly that plume is when it came through, particularly at that range, and how they buried it and covered it up, and how that ship couldn't even go into certain ports, how they were rejected. Because they know that the Americans got a massive dose, same as the stuff I'm going to tell you showing up here right now in a few moments. But Fox News, March the 18th, 2011, all the stricken reactors and spent fuels contained plutonium. All of them. So let's put that baby to rest. I'm going to jump ahead to June the 5th. Uh, i got a couple of articles that are in June and one in August. Government simulation showed radioactive plume of Krypton 85 over Tokyo March the 15th. Reactor number 3 with MOX exploded March the 14th. So that was a March the 14th and March the 15th. So we're still on track for what I've been doing here tonight. Uh, radioactive releases may continue for a year. This was March the 14th. The New York Times. March the 14th. Three days after. Radioactive releases may continue for a year or more, even after fission has stopped. New York Times. 2011, March the 13th, actually. And then the article was republished on the 14th. So it was two days after. And they had predicted it. Tokyo has lost almost all control of events at Fukushima. That was March the 15th. March the 15th, UN, EU Energy Commission calls Fukushima an apocalypse. Almost everything is out of control. That was March the 15th again. March the 16th, France says Japan has lost control and the French should leave the country. Right? So that was March the 15th and the 16th rattles. March the 18th, nuke expert. It's... It'd be like somebody dropped a bomb if the melted fuel rods breached the reactor vessels. Well, the Earth is split all over that site, right? Split all over the place. And the steam that's coming up is from the cores and the coriums, from the water running over and superheating, supercharging and aerosoling. You know, think about they sprayed all that water from reactor 5 and 6, right, down on top of uh, 3 and 2 and 1. Well, that was 40 million Beckwells a liter stuff they sprayed down there. So there's no peer review study like the one, the peer review study below about the buckyballs is really hard to digest, and that's why I keep bringing it up for everybody because it's very important. How that is uh, allows the uranium and the plutonium to get ingested into those buckyballs, and they're free for, for millions and billions of years. They're hard at work. You can't, they don't lose any kind of steam. And they don't salute in the water the same as uh, the other stuff. They, that's why they always talk about cesium anyway. Cesium is emblematic of a recent fission, right, of a recent release. And so it's a good caliber because most people's Geiger counter can pick up the cesium. But you got to get your Geiger counter set to pick up certain isotopes. You're just, you're just cesium. It doesn't... You have to get it calibrated for those isotopes. Even though it's capable of looking for uranium, it's capable of looking for plutonium, you got to get them set... For the 234 to 235, or the plutonium 239, 238s, 237s, whatever you're looking for, the Geiger counter, once, it's like a guitar. You buy a, go out and buy a $1,000 guitar, you still got to get it set up. Just because you went out and bought a, an expensive guitar don't mean it's set up proper. How stupid is that? Cause, but the reality of it is everybody used to set up their guitars individually. And it's like that with your Geiger counter. Otherwise, it doesn't perform properly, and you got to know what you're doing, or it don't perform properly. And I'm going to cover a lot of that tomorrow night. Um, they didn't stop the fission solar. That's what I'm going to show you here anyway. A big cloud of very, very radioactive material above the ground, March the 18th. Uh, March 21st, surface forecast shows the radioactive uh, xenon 133, 133. <laughs> lingering over Florida, and I can't show you that, but you should look it up. Uh, it's a YouTube video. Surface forecast shows radioactive xenon, X-E-N-L-N, 133 lingering over Florida. It's a frightening graph. It's an accurate graph. It's a, um, a, a well-known model. 
and that was on um, 21st. No, that was 29th of March. Sorry, folks. On the uh, 18th, the feds admit radioactive xenon-133 from Fukushima was detected two days before that in Washington State. Uh, that was the Wall Street Journal. Associated Press on March 27 said hardly any cooling water inside one of the reactors. That was reactor 2 that they were talking about. The water levels are only 6% of the estimate. Radiation is 10 times a fatal dose. 10 times a fatal dose. So you can imagine the poor victims, um, the people that work there and are working there, that are the homeless and everything else, the, what they're up against. That whole site, right, was blown up. Um, like the video I've done today to make sure everybody's on the right page. Everybody got a, at least a really good understanding of Fukushima. Just a very basic, that's all that video was about, but <laughs> it's a lot of work. Ten times the fatal dose on the 18th. Wow. By March the 24th, first, five nuclear isotopes from Fukushima detected in Seattle. Uh, the iodine-31, 132, uh, terillium-132, cesium-134, cesium-137, which are just uh, results of the fission, the nuclear. So that was a, a true nuclear, you know, right away is what I'm trying to put here. Canada suspends mobile radiation men measures around Vancouver, B.C. until further notice, until the radioactive, as radioactive cloud is coming. That was uh, published, uh, that was March the 31st from Health Canada. They start shutting down the Saanich Peninsula, Victoria's, Vancouver, the Hyagwai, the Broken Ass Island are up there. On uh, March the 24th, got shut down. 26 in uh, Victoria, and they start shutting down all the ra uh, radioactive detective uh, facilities right across Canada that are collecting right their filters, and so you got to send them away to get them analyzed after. But they're collecting it, and they, and they shut it all down. They put a big sign over the door and said, "We're not coming back till the cloud is long gone." So they denied us the ability. Even though we paid for all of that, that's we paid for those researchers. We paid for all. We paid for people to be there all the time doing it. We didn't pay them not to do their job that day, right? They should pay us back the money they got that day, because we didn't pay them to do that day. And um, that's really naughty that they done that, and that's criminal. They should be in jail. They should be hanging from street poles. And we need to know who done that. Who gave the order to shut all this down? Desperately, we need to know that that has to be flushed out soon then later that's priority who shut down who said that they're going to shut down all the stuff in america that has to be flushed out you know that's what alex jones should be doing it's flushing out who said that who said and who said came up with the national security orders that you can't uh, tell people right about the radioactive fallout who made that decision for you wouldn't you want to know i desperately want to know I really truly do. I want to know who actually physically done it. I want to see that information. I'm going to find it at some point. China rejects ship from California with abnormal radiation. It had only been in Tokyo for a few hours. That was March the 29th. So vessels are radioactive is what they're saying, right? China was saying. EPA says uh, Pennsylvania and Massachusetts have seen elevated levels of radiation and rain. Oh, but it's not a health concern. That's what they said, the EPA. Of course, they grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals with no environmental human impact studies in 1981 when they hung their shingles outside the door. Uh, let me keep going. Now, these, cap these samples were captured uh, in Alaska, Alabama, California, Guam, Hawaii, Idaho, Nevada, uh, Northern Mariana Islands, Washington State, over the past week, and sent to the EPA, and they just hit it all away. Right? They said, uh, no worries, no worries, a little bit elevated, short term. Meanwhile, we know better. We know the plumes. We've seen the models from all the countries, from France, from Australia, from all around the world. Um, radioactive isotope levels are increasing in the U.S. That was uh, March the 28th. And that was the EPA going, these types of finding are to be expected in the coming days, but we're not going to tell the population. There's no concern, go back to sleep, we need, we need all these weaponized isotopes so we can get off the planet and kill the ocean and leave you with nothing behind. 
Japan's nuclear expert. Humanity as a whole has literally never experienced something like Fukushima. That was actually uh, May 11, so that's a bit later. We will be fighting this radiation on the order of tens and hundreds of years. That was a press conference on the Fukushima Daiichi's made from May to Ford. That's quite a statement. Humanity as a whole has literally never experienced something like Fukushima. And that's why we are here now over 80 days doing this. Because we get that. and But we need an informed population um, to, to be able to deal with this. Because this has to get dealt with. We just can't uh, turn our backs. You know, we can't, we can't do that. The rest of the population might marginalize us, not understand the importance and the logic or the math behind it, um, but they will at some point. And so we got to make sure everybody out there that's capable is able to come out and counter the propaganda machine and bring the truth out. Because the truth uh, destroys the nuclear PR firms. It truly does. The truth literally annihilates it. Yeah, well, I'm thinking Harper made a decision too, Diver. Radioactive iodine detected by Tampa area nuclear plant. The iodine travels through the air very easily. That was March the 26th. But uh, March the 27th, radioactive, radioactivity at 10 million times usual level at the number two reactor. The workers were evacuated. And March the 27th, you can see the carnage is still going on. There 10 million times acceptable levels. Nothing is safe, but they're what they call acceptable. Swedish Embassy tells the citizens to begin taking iodine tablets if within 150 miles of Fukushima includes Tokyo. So somebody out there told their citizens to take iodine. Bloody well it wasn't Canada. And think about how Russia evacuated 7,500 communities in the late 40s because of radiation fallout. Right? They done the right thing, the moral thing, the ethical thing, and it's kept they then they kept working on nuclear stuff. They never stopped. But at least they got all those people out of harm's way, but they never gave up the nuclear. It's still out there mass murdering today. Working hardcore on the uh, that was May twenty ninth, Swedish embassy tells the citizens to begin taking iodine tablets if within hundred and fifty miles. Within uh, seven thousand kilometers I think is more appropriate, but hey. After that's easy. Unit 2 water, 10 times more radioactive than Unit 1. Uh, 47 million becquels per liter in the turbine room basements. This was uh, July the 24th, uh, 5th, 23rd, the story came out from a, Ju from a July 10th samples. So the, that's the big buildings out in the front, close to the shoreline. So the water's running downhill into those buildings. So you can't get into those big buildings, the pump houses, see? Turbines. Nuclear Pearl. This one, uh, March the 30th, began beginning of a three to five year effort, said the expert, risk that Japan could export its nuclear problems via air and sea. And confidence slips away as Japan battles nuclear pearl. New York Times, March the 29th, okay? So all of these stuff I'm talking about tonight is all the so-called, you know, bootlick and mainstream media. And so far so good. Uh, yeah, can Reactor 3 develop uh, into a fusion event, Kevin Kelly? Right. Yeah, go right back into criticality. If the rods, any rods that are sitting there touch other metals or touch themselves in particular, they will go back into a nuclear fusion. Think about those tanks they got on the site, for instance. Well, all the he heavy particles will fall to the bottom of that tank, and those tanks, if those hoses break off those tanks in an earthquake, and those tanks start to run dry... Well, the water that's on top of it won't be able to keep the heavy metal on the bottom uh, cool enough. It'll go into a nuclear fusion itself inside the tanks. That's just from the, just the tiny particles that are, because they're so heavy, they fall to the bottom of the tank. So it's like a sludge on the bottom of the tank of americium, plutonium, strontium, uranium, and everything else. It's, it's it truly is a, a devil's brew. Yeah, Canada is the second largest exporter of uranium. That's right, Missing Sky. Thank you. Yeah, good one. Hi, Lizard, uh, Anna Beck, Stephen, Stenson, Ryder. Let me keep going, folks. So, beginning of a three to five year effort, said Expert, and export its nuclear, risk that Japan could export its nuclear problems via the air and sea is real. It's insane. It's insidious.
It's unstoppable. There is no technology on the planet that can deal with this. You have to develop that. And they're not doing that. 4,800 uh, 4, peer-reviewed academic studies every day, three a minute, 1,000-page studies, and they're all locked away. None of them is about this, and we paid for all of that. That's the problem. Imagine if we just took 4,800 studies right away on how to solve some of these problems. We'd be a long way ahead. But you've got to think about the Philippines. 7,000 islands, annihilated. Annihilated with 200 mile an hour sustained for four hours. F4 tornado, 100 miles wide. And the average tornado, or a big tornado, would have been about a quarter mile wide in F4. And it would have traveled maybe six miles at its best. And it would stay over your head for two minutes. It stayed over everybody's head down there, sustained for four hours. That was just the eye we're talking about. The rest of it at 150 is still beyond a horrifying, okay? The ear is projectiles. Everything was destroyed because the ear, it was a 100 mile wide F4 tornado. There is no other way to explain this. It was a 100 mile wide, even though it's that, you know, all the Wikipedia and everything says, oh, you know, tornadoes only get as big as a quarter mile, but that's a big one. Yeah, well, you haven't seen the Philippines. 44 provinces annihilated. And I'd done a recent video about that, seven or eight minutes long. And everybody made sure that I went out there. And that's a really, you know, I'm so grateful that you folks done that. And again today, you folks, uh, I don't know what I was thinking today, but I put the remix button in right away. And then I kind of forgot about it. And I was a little bit surprised <laughs> later to see it when I seen the video popping up and everybody uploading it. And I was really, you know, really, truly happy. Because that means the word has gone out, see? Right? That means it's gone out. And that gives me closure too, right? So I can move on to the next subject. Uh, with confidence that, you know, we've done the best we could, right? That's the best we can do. Um, hi, Annabeck, Stacy Lane, Wedge Mac, Ivan, 2012, Mia, Radchick is out there, we know, we say hi again. Let's go on to another headline. Let me run over here and check. Uh, we're still good. It's raining pretty hard out there tonight, folks, so probably hearing some background noises. Uh, we got New York Times contributor confirmed California rainwater is 181 times above drinking water standards for radioactive iodine 131. Once again, that's code word for plutonium and uranium. If there's iodine there, there's co there's uranium there, uh, which got a 4.5 billion year half life. And it's extraordinarily toxic, and plutonium, which has a 24 year half life. But you got to multiply all of this by 10. So whenever you hear half life and an isotope, multiply it by 10. And so 24, not that it matters, 24,000 is 240,000 a year. But I'm just trying to drive the point home about how they confuse you and marginalize. Like the iodine 131 is supposed to dissipate in seven days, but it actually is times 10. So it's 70 days at least. That's the rule of thumb. You multiply by 10 because it breaks down into other radioactive isotopes. So they just say 131, which is emblematic of the fusion, has only got a seven day half life. It must have come from a recent fusion, right? A, re a recent release. So it's important that way, but because the plutonium uranium gets left out of the equation all the time, nobody asks. And it seems pretty obvious when you think about it. You know, the reactors run on plutonium uranium, not, um, not the other one. So California rainwater, 181 times above drinking water standards. April the 2nd, 2011. March 29th, a couple of days before that, radioactive iodine 131 in Pennsylvania rainwater samples is 3,300% above federal drinking water standards. It's a standard, but it's not safe. There's no such thing as safe doses of radiation. You know, like the, like the natural uranium that was in the ocean has nothing to do with the uranium at Fukushima. It's got nothing to do with 234 and 235 uranium uh, weaponized uh, isotopes. They're not indigenous to the planet. Uh, the uranium that's on this planet, that's, you know, through the solar system. But we have been here for, we are genetically, uh, we can deal with the natural radiation of the ocean, natural radiation of the sun. That's got nothing to do with nuclear radiation, but they always try to confuse you by bringing that into a conversation. So you know they're a dickhead and they're dumb when they use that. And that if they're intelligent people and they're public speakers, and they're knowledgeable and they got the degrees and they still say bananas or they still say background radiation like a sun, then they know better. They have the education. If they put that on their test, it would have failed. They got their certificate and then they went out and used that to lie and marginalize people like us. 
It's very, it's very sneaky what they got done there. But you know they're a bootlicking, cheerleading lapdog the minute they use that in the equation because it has nothing to do with the equation. It should never be, period. Uh, let me keep going on that one. That one was radioactive iodine, 3,300% above any standards in Pennsylvania, March the 29, 2011. Uh, March the 31st, San Francisco, 18,000 times above federal drinking. When iodine-131, that means uranium-plutonium was there and that people were ingesting it. Everybody got it, see? Everybody. August the 4th, iodine-131 spiked above maximum allowable limits at four or five sites in Health Canada. And then uh, five on... Uh, Shortly after that, they had closed all of um, the counters down, right? April 8, 2011, Canadian radiation test shows iodine in rainwater at almost 100 times above U.S. drinking water. Well, it could be faulty gear. They got the wrong number. It could be 1,000 times higher than that, or it could be 1,000 times lower than that. But because we know the plumes came over, we've seen all the models, we've seen all the carnage, we've seen all the damage, we know how this works, we know how, how fast this aerosols and what a gram will create more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. We don't have to wait for them to tell us nothing. But it's nice to have all of these headlines from March and relate it to that first month. That's what we're doing here and we're getting through it. So that was April the 8th, 100 times in Canada. Here's a July the 26th that came out, the video of the ex-Fukushima chief reactor 3 debris. This was on uh, March the 13th happened. But the story came out in July that Reactor 3 debris flew into the control room after the explosion. And so the workers, saints in hell, thought he could have died. That's a huge explosion. That was a detonation that was felt, and you remember the article er earlier, it was felt 25 miles away by an AP reporter. So any of these headlines, if you're watching the video after, you can stop the video and type in the headline. You'll find that story, folks. That's what I do all the time. And these are all, uh, literally, every one of them are mainstream news. Every single, single one of them without fail. Sky News, March the 17th. Radiation experts, it's the beginning of the catastrophic freeze. Maybe we have to pray. That's pretty ominous, man. March the 17th. See? That was six days after. Maybe we have to pray. It's the beginning of the catastrophic phase. This was a radiation expert on Sky News. Down in uh, Great Brittany, where they got uh, Sellafield, Great Britain, I mean, Great Brittany. That's my own, actually, personal joke, because a friend of mine's British, so I always torture him. That's what I say. I say, how's Great Brittany doing these days? <laughs> well, I always get to smile at them. Yeah, check your air conditioning systems. Take the air uh, cleaners out of your car. Check them. Out of your vacuum cleaners, check them. Out of your HEPA filters, out of your air filters, if you've got uh, a lot of big homes when you buy them, uh, recent homes will have the big air filters, your furnaces, and get them checked by all means, right? But remember, you can only check, we've got a serious uh, nuclear fallout going on here right now, rain, rain out, that's all nuclear rain out. And here's another one for you folks, take a windmill in your home and put soap all over the windmill. And then take a razor blade and scrape the whole window on a bit of 15 degree angle. Careful because the razor blade is really sharp. So you might want to dig out the band-aids before you get at that. Just kidding. But what I always do is I take a piece of tape and put it on the back of the band-aid and you scrape the whole window and you wash it again. And then you throw water over and you put a towel at the bottom and you pour water over and let the towel catch the water. This way you get rid of all the streaks. So you dry it off. Like you dry off most of the soap with paper towels or something like that, but you need to use a certain type of cloth to make sure there's no lint left on your windows. So do the inside and the outside. And you're going to do that window all the time, especially after it rains. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to check it on sunny days when the sun is shining on that window, so you need a southerly exposure. And you're going to see stains on your windows on the outside. And you can take samples of that and send it in and get it tested to see if that was any nuclear fallout that stuck to your glass. It's a really simple way to do things. And because it'll gather up on your glass, I do it uh, here. I don't get it tested, but I do it to keep an eye on how much uh, 
shows up on it because of all the chemtrailing too, which uh, most chemtrailing, make no mistake about it, is about putting out particles to catch the radiation. And I'm going to make a video about that eventually for everybody so they can really truly see what I'm talking about. Like I've done today for everybody so they can keep up and understand and get ahead and have the same narrative to work with and to go out and research from. And you know, like if I make a mistake, you know, tell me. Yeah, if I if I if I uh, miss something, by all means, tell me. That's what makes me stronger. That's what makes me better. But if someone's going to tell me something and they're f and I know it's a fabrication or a misdirection, and I take my time and work through it, I can't help you, right? I can't get to everybody, unfortunately. I'm trying though. I'm working at it. Things are going to change here soon, for the better. Um. And Radchick's got nuke radio, folks. And, like, she's not messing around. She's not there to play games, okay? She's much more serious than I am. And much more knowledgeable and much better education. And a uh, long background and dedication at this, right? And you can find links below, and then that'll link you up to her Twitters and her Facebook, hopefully. And just go over to her site. There's links below if you can find her comment, because I know they're moving pretty fast. If not, it's down underneath the video if you're watching this after. So, March the 12th, here's another story. Power Company says all the functions to keep cooling water levels number three reactor have failed. And so we're back to where we started off. There we go. Pretty darn good. I got through it. I probably rushed it a little bit, I know. I just wanted to bum out a bunch of uh, headlines for everybody to really get a grasp, to have something to work with and understand that there's so many narratives out there just from that first month I couldn't possibly sit here all night and put it all out there but that was a bunch of my favorites it's not all of my favorites I do have uh, another folder now it's got about 155 headlines in it and because that's so many I'm gonna go through it and just pick out say 30 that are helps each other and then do that tomorrow night and then the next night you know, I'll have the other whatever's left, devoid it, and anything new added onto it. And because I can, I can pull out 50 headlines a day because I can read 50 stories, no problem. So I can pull out 50 anyway. That's enough for that night. And I read through it, and I downloaded all the videos, and uh, I like all the studies, all the research, all the reports. I'm always that's some of the key words I'm always using in my uh, searching. And Radchick says she got three big interviews coming soon for her three-year anniversary. That has been just non-stop. And um, we're very grateful that you're doing what you're doing. And once again, you know, uh, it's a good measuring stick. You know, just one person is able to do by themselves. Think about it. And you can be just like that. I mean, the most powerful thing you folks got out there is your voice. And at some point, you're going to have to use it. So you might want to practice. It's hard to do it. I know, it's hard to, it's hard to do that. And so you just got to make some uh, attempts. You don't have to post them online though. So you shoot a video of yourself talking. Find something, even type it out and just read it. What you think, what you feel, what you know. If, like type out a minute's word and get a couple of pictures and put the audio in it, or just shoot the video and read it. Doesn't doesn't matter if you don't look at the camera. Just read it, and listen to yourself and look at yourself. And then look at stuff that you think might help you and, and redo it again. And I, uh, sometimes, you know, I would sit and shoot these videos 25 times in a row. Not like this live stream, but a video that I put up on my, night, on my site, even though I typed everything out, I still might shoot it 25 times in a row because I burped or the dog uh, made some noise I didn't like in the background. And I'm so conscious, too conscious sometimes. But you learn about your flaws, you learn about your inconsistencies, you learn how to tighten it all up, you learn how to put it together into a little package with just a little bit of effort. Uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of things about the, the chemtrails, right? Uh, and they, they do have multiple uses, and I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that every country on the planet, their oh shit plan for radiation fallout is to go up and spray out particles because the electrons from the gammas and the betas and the alphas uh, will aggregate with the particles and that will weigh them down and they know they just screw themselves if too much of it gets out there and gets detected by countries out there that 
are not controlled by them will say, hey, we're getting all this radiation. And then that becomes a big story and puts pressure on the PR infestation that uh, is out there lying and murdering people in, as a PR, nuclear PR firms. They're just outright murderers. I don't want to go down that road. Hi, Penny. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Solar Max. Stacy, thank you. Radchick, got something else there. I'll touch on it. 40 new six celebrities. And folks, let me tell you something. When some of the stuff Radchick might say will, will throw you off because you can't really wrap your mind around it. Have a little look because she doesn't waste her time on nonsense, okay? Trust me. So stuff that you don't think is, is Iran, don't really mean much, doesn't have any use. Make no mistake, it's very useful, it's very relevant, and that's something that you'll learn if you pay any attention. Hi, Sarah Lee Bakerson. Uh, yeah, somebody called in, I caught that on the video for Alex Jones. Someone asked, Alex said he'd like to interview Radchick. And because she's very, uh, she, she's not like me, I'm pretty rough, but uh, she's you know, very presentable and has been a long time and is dedicated to it and has a radio show, Nuke Radio. And uh, she's got three interviews coming up, so it's all good. Uh, Solar Max, I'm going to say hi and goodbye to everybody now. We're winding down. I told me giggling pins at the beginning of the video. I should have saved the story for the end, I suppose. I could have, but not why bother. Uh, save stories for tomorrow night or the night after. Annabeth, dog farts. Yeah, that was me. Hi, Lunar. Not Ladder, Cars. I have, uh, yeah, we covered that one. DC, Babo. Yeah, Char. Hi, Char. Um, you're welcome, Stacy. Yeah, thank you, Solar. Annabeck. Okay, we're winding down right here, right now. Stetson. Uh, once again, Sarah Lee Radchick. Checks and balances. Excellent. Hey, bud. Thank you. And I don't see how to get enough. Aqua 123. <laughs> yeah. Uh, once again, I don't get access to all the comments because... That's just the way it works here. But I do come in after. Hi, Cats Alive. David, Nelson. Uh, Aqua, 123. Elizabeth, hi. Starlights. Pet lovers. Well, let's see where my hand is to. So the audio is a little bit better with this, with that thing there, eh? It's a lot cleaner. Just less. But it's picking up all the rain, I know, because it's a massive. It's really, we're having some serious nuclear fall out here tonight. Every time it rains, you can be sure. Yeah, Lauren, Lauren Moret. She's an incredible, folks. And you'll find a link below my video if you're watching this after. Thanks, Rob, to Lauren and uh, Radchick, Christina Consolo. We'll catch you all tomorrow night. And once again, um, my dog is snoring. And I always find that adorable. Because every single one of these live streams in the background is always snoring it's just the sweetest little thing ever okay i'll try to sign out i'll probably have to do it twice we'll check it out now the first time nope which is great because what else can i say i get to say goodbye twice to everybody that's pretty darn good pretty fortunate and once again you know you folks um i see the video today has gone out there i did try to put that video in mine when i was making it so you would have a narrative to beat anybody with, uh, to at least make them think. And if you had to beat them, you have a narrative to beat them with. But at least you have a narrative now of, you know, one, two, three, four, and five, and six, and the ocean plumes, and the jet streams from the different institutions, and all the headlines are from the mainstream media. It's a pretty tight package. It's a tiny package. It's not everything, but I thought it was a good start, and I'm working on another one. Uh, Fukushima 102 and so tomorrow night we'll cover the other stuff Busby, Alex Jones and a few other people and I'm going to go and start analyzing all of that now and digging up the material for tomorrow night so we'll catch you folks tomorrow night once again thanks Radchick uh, check her link below folks go over and actually listen to stuff okay that's the better way to go about it and try to catch her nuke radio show it's it's a lot of work and she needs uh, as many people as possible paying attention because it's good stuff Take care.